welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. We're not sewing today, but I've had so many people ask me about my sewing room um, and in particular about the drawers that I have behind me. Some of you have been trying to have close-ups of the video just to see what my labels all say. So I'm going to take you for a walk around my entire sewing room. It's going to be a short walk because it's a tiny, tiny little room. I can put my hand on the wall here and if I had one more arm, I could actually touch the window, but I don't and I won't. <laughs> so come along. I have cleaned this room up especially for you. So I reckon that because I've done that, you're going to have to come along and have a look around and see what I've got in my room. So let's have that tour. All right, here we go. It's quite a pokey little room, but I like it. So as you come in, I've got benches all the way around that Chris made for me. And there used to be the same Merbu bench in here as well until um, I decided to go industrial. So let's start with my drawers. So in these drawers here are mostly the dregs of things that I can't find a spot for. Up here I've got my books, magazines, lots of notepads and I've got a whole heap more sewing books out in the studio. I keep my full roll of zipper tape in here. I have one at the shop as well. And the same with the strapping that I use. I always have quite a few rolls of this strapping because I use it in most of my bags. Same with this zipper tape. I use that with nearly all of my products. Between home and the shop, I have at least double of everything. Uh, what have we got in here? Okay, these are some of my YouTube projects that I've done that I'm not quite happy with. The editing was mucked up, so they may or may not come. Patterns. Got lots of patterns. I think this is the one for kids' patterns. And my adult patterns. So these are all dresses that I will do one day. This is one I want to do soon. I love that style. Um, some projects that I haven't quite finished yet. This was an embroidery that I did uh, some time back and I'm going to put this into a, some kind of a bag, I think. All my video equipment, dud tripods and things. Got to put them somewhere. In here, I have an old coffee grinder and I actually use this coffee grinder for grinding chalk. So uh, I like my little chalk wheels and I'll just use the coffee grinder to chalk, grind the chalk so that I can have a really nice fine powder. Glue gun. This is my junk drawer. I don't really have any order in this one at all. Blades. They're extra blades for my big fabric cutter. Nothing exciting in there. That's just covers for machines. Some scrap batting in here and there's some more scrap batting in here and then I have a big chunk of batting at the shop. Up here I have, okay these are the things I use the most. My brushed metal labels that I use on some of my products, my swivel clips, so I have a whole bunch of those here and also at the shop. And these are just buttons that I use. I keep every button that I can find and I'll use those in those helping hands card holders and whatever else I need them for. Now we've gone through those drawers. What else have we got? This is a nice old print that Chris framed up for me. Just a fashion um, statement from the 1930s. So that looks cute. I try to make use of all, all the space in my room. And this is the back of the door. So this is an old zipper this metal thing is an old zipper thing from my shop so I just keep a whole bunch of zips on hand behind the door because they are out of the way nice and easily. I've got a little mirror in here just in case I have customers or I need to see clothes when I'm fitting them. There's quite a few machines down here that need to be looked at. This clear plastic one is just one that Jim Nomi provided to us dealers back when I used to sell sewing machines just to show customers what they actually look like inside. So anyway I've got a couple of sewing machines there to look at and in here I have a beeswax project so I've got to make some beeswax wraps and they're just sitting under there waiting for one day when I get onto it. You've seen this um, bag that goes underneath the sewing machine. I did a video for that recently. This is a, a machine that I have cleaned up and fixed 
messed up. There wasn't really much wrong with it, but it's a beautiful machine. I have done a video for it, but I'm not sure if I want to just go through and finish editing that and show you all. But let me know if you're interested. My dressmaker's mannequin, because I've got nowhere else to put it. There's very little floor space in this room. Uh, I've taken the curtains off this window because I really like the view out in my ferneries. I do really enjoy the view that I've got in my room. It was silly to keep the curtains on here. Okay, coffee is a staple in my diet. Uh, so I've got a couple of cutting mats, really big cutting mats on the tables in my room. That way I can just go and cut out wherever I feel like it. And on the bench over here, I've got an ironing board that I made myself just to have something nice and flat. It's just a little retro drawer. The pegboard itself was actually from my shop when I used to have sell haberdashery. I, we've kept a piece of it and then Chris has put a frame around it. We've, we've painted it black and I've just used some of the old hooks that I used to have in the shop as well to hang all my bits and pieces. So I do like things nice and organised. Cupboards. When we built this room, all I wanted was an overhead cupboard. I didn't actually want anything down below the benches because I wanted to be able to zip around my room on my little stool. I've pulled the cover off this one and recovered it so that it matches my walls. And I can just zip around the room with my stool and go from one machine to the next or one project to the next. Everything is really easy to get to, um, being able to keep my counter clean underneath. Chris has provided power holes for me in lots of different spots on my counter. And that's because I tend to rearrange this room every 10 minutes. So I like to have my machines in different places and the ability to plug things in all over the place. I do only have one power point in here, but what Chris has done is we've taken the power from behind these drawers here and he's run a power lead or some extension leads right around the room and they're all sitting in underneath the bench top so there's nothing on the floor and I've got these switched power boards all around the room so I can just go and plug my machines and whatnot in whenever I feel like it. Let's go to the cupboard. It's not pretty. There's a pair of pants here that I picked up at an op shop not long ago and I'm going to make them into a bag. They're vinyl pants, they're really cute, but I'm going to make them into a bag and some other bits and pieces. So there is actually still some air space in this cupboard. I'm not a very good fabric hoarder, am I, if I've still got space? So these cupboards here really just have a lot of vintage fabric in there. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with them, so they're just there because I think one day they might come in handy. The next one has most of the fabric in here is what I plan to use in my dance dresses. So Chris and I do rock and roll and before COVID, I think I had about 50 or 60 rock and, rock and roll dresses. I had plenty of fabric in here to make some more and we've hardly danced in the past couple of years. I've put on a ton of weight, so I need to eventually get back and make some more dresses. And that brings me to the final part of the tour and that is this shelf here. Even though I have bench space all the way around the room I didn't want to have my benches cluttered in fact I actually think they're still cluttered as they are it's not a very big room so I need to make sure I keep as much off the benches as I possibly can so Chris has put in a merbu shelf all the way along the room and it is actually a little bit wobbly but we've screwed everything down uh, and he look actually I just want to show you this mum will recognize this this is mum's little sewing box from the 1950s, I think it is. It's actually a musical one, but the music box isn't playing at the moment, but it is really, really cute. No, the music's not playing at the moment. It's so beautiful. I have memories of this in, in the living room at home when I was a child, and mum would just go and pull out her little threads and she'd be sewing on buttons and I'd be watching her so I do have fond memories of that and that actually um, started my obsession with the concertina style sewing boxes as well I think I ended up with about 13 or 14 of them at one stage and they would have a wingspan of about two two and a half meters some of them so they're quite big this is my grandfather and my sister and my cousins and myself and I am that one just there that was oh, back in the 1960s. These are my sons. I have twin boys. They will be 29 in a couple of weeks' times. They're my boys. Okay, you all wanted to see what was in my drawers. I label everything. I count everything. I've got this thing about numbers and labels. I do like things in order. It makes it a lot easier to find things. I do have a lot of scatter in my brain. So anyway, what have we got? 
hand needles. So I just keep a whole assortment of hand needles when Chris and I do house cleanouts. I love going through people's sewing boxes and I'll pick out whatever I find that I might not already have. Machine needles. I keep machine needles for, these are the ones for my regular sewing machines, for my domestic machines. So I still have plenty of those machines that I use. Uh, bobbins. So the clear plastic bobbins are the ones I use in my brother and Janome sewing machines. And the metal bobbins are the ones that I use in my new industrial machines. This drawer here just has bits and pieces in it, spare numbers, uh, any bits of hardware that I take off sample swatches and things like that that might be handy one day. I keep a stash of velcro in here because it'll because it's useful for some projects so i have to have velcro here and at the shop because i do do a lot of alterations with velcro and a lot of my bags have them too i'm going to go through the toolbox last because that's got lots of goodies in there trims and lace well there's not much in there cords uh, i don't do a lot with that oh i was looking for that I've been looking for this green tape for a long time. Okay, I should open these drawers more often. Uh, more buttons in here, but uh, the biggest stash of buttons that I've got are actually at the shop. Eyelets. Uh, these are press studs and snap fasteners for jeans and things. I've got lots of bias binding that's always handy for jobs. Uh, I use it a lot of in handles as well or e even if I'm not going to line a bag I might use bias binding on the inside edges. Uh, zipper pulls, so these are the number number five zipper pulls that I use which is the most common one that I use on the roll and then I've got a whole bunch of zips that I've either cut to the wrong size or I've got prepared that I was playing around with. Uh, I keep an assortment of elastic here, but I keep a much bigger assortment of elastic at the shop. Lucky it's only a couple of minutes away. What's in this one? Miscellaneous. These are little measuring bars, which are great for hemming, especially if you're doing curtaining. So they're just a metal bar that I occasionally use for hemming. Now, anything fusible that I have is in here. The quarter inch tape, the double sided tape, it's something I use a lot of and I just keep some tape in here as well. This is just my linen thread or I use the orange thread if I need to do some gathering. So there's not much there but occasionally the linen threads come in handy for something as does the orange one for when I do some gathering. Ribbon. <laughs> See that one explode. Uh, I keep all the ribbon I get. So if I get a gift and it's got ribbon on it, I'll take the ribbon off. If I, you know the little keepers that you get on your garments when you buy clothes, I hate them sitting in my clothes. So I'll cut those off and keep them because they'll be handy in something. Cotton tape. I keep that in a few different sizes. Again, I've got a bigger range of that at the shop. Pens. These are just my regular pens and pencils not for fabric although I'm guilty of using them sometimes uh, these are my fabric pens and markers the next one I have is chalk when I was telling you about the coffee grinder before what I like to do is refill these these chalk wheels and put the chalk inside there this little plastic thing at the bottom will come out and then I can just fill it up with more chalk so I have a few of those chalk wheels last container oh well actually not quite uh so pins and tape i have in this one these are just packets of pins a lot of them haven't been opened uh, but i do like to have really good sharp pins and uh, then there's just little trinkets and things like that in there as well so pretty much anything to do with sewing if i see it i'll keep it okay i'm going to take this drawer out all right, this is the drawer that I've got my tools in there. Stanley knife. I actually hate Stanley knives, but I've just taken that out of Chris's shed for a project. I really don't like them. I just think they're terribly unsafe. Uh, one of the tools you'll see me use quite often is this seam gauge. So I love my seam gauge. It's next to my seam ripper. It's probably the most handy tool that I've got. This is a clover, it's like a hemming guide and you'll put your fabric underneath and fold your fabric over and use the measurements there for hemming. It's more of a gimmick than anything else. I certainly wouldn't waste my money again going out to buy one, but it does come in handy. I've got an awl. I love my awl. I use that for quite a bit. I've got quite a few awls. 
This is a, I don't even remember what I use this for. Ah, it's a crease maker. When I used to do a lot of patchwork and quilting, this was handy for putting creases in your fabric when, rather than going and ironing. Templates. I've got lots and lots of templates. You've seen me make my bags and I think in one of my box bag tutorials, I use lots of different size templates. And I just like to have them all available for me so I don't have to go and measure all the time. Makes the job a lot easier when you're actually making lots of the same bag. This is a seam guide and this is just another gimmick. It's got a little quarter inch line in there. I always keep spare rotary cutter blades. So I have quite a lot of tracing wheels. The hump jumper. The hump jumper is something that is absolutely brilliant when you're going over the bulky bits of your sewing it, it will actually help you prevent breaking your needles if i can think of the video that i've used the hump jumper in i'll attach a link up here i think it might have been in hemming the jeans but the hump jumper is absolutely brilliant and then i've just got a whole bunch of alls in here lots of vintage bits and pieces uh, that was when i had my shop well when i had my fabric shop just some magnets now the other thing that I do love, I've saved this one till last and I have shown you this in one of my videos before. This is a pattern notcher. So it's actually for marking notches in your patterns. But I use this, especially before I got my hands fixed, I would use this to clip the curves on my work. I reckon that might be about it. I've got a small lining board just over here, just the collapsible one and the bigger one over there, which I showed you earlier. And then I also have some rulers. So I've got a big square just over there. I've got my quilters ruler here, some cutting, more cutting mats. And I don't know, that's about it. I forgot to mention outside my room, Chris has got me this old cupboard and I, have got lots of fabric in here well I've still got plenty of room to fit more but this is just what I've been gathering lately so it's a really nice old school cupboard so I've got room for some fabric outside my room and I also have a purpose-built cupboard in the laundry for it as well we'll go there next so in the laundry which we've actually only just remodeled uh, in the past 12 months we've organized to have these cupboards built in so I've just put some utility cupboards in here and that holds some of my interfacing and then just this most of this is vintage fabric that I've had for some time and then a stash of vinyl that I've got at the top there. So one day I'll get through these fabrics as well. So it's quite a pokey little room. I like it. It's nice and colourful and bright. Makes me happy and I have a really lovely view out here. So I'm going to leave this video here with a lovely view of my fernery. Hope you've enjoyed the walk around and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now. I thought I'd show you some before and after photos of my sewing room. This is a tiny little room just outside the house and these photos are what the room used to look like before we started renovating it and afterward. I've taken out one of the windows, put the overhead cupboards in, brightened up the room and I think it's come up a treat.